it's interesting. Um, there are a lot of traditions and um, uh, theological frameworks that sort of treat interpretation as a sin. <laughs> they they sort of associate interpretation and the and the hermeneutical process with the fall, with some kind of lapse that took place, so that now we have to interpret. Uh, because the world is broken, because the world is evil, because the world is fallen. Um, the argument of the fall of interpretation is that that's not right. <laughs> that the, the core argument of the fall of interpretation is that, in fact, all of the conditions that require us to interpret, all of the conditions that require us to um, understand by means of interpretation are actually just the conditions of creaturehood. They're just the conditions of finitude. And if creation is good, indeed if creation is pronounced by God to be very good, then actually interpretation must also be a good. So the, the core thesis and argument of the book is that um, interpretation and, and hermeneutics is part and parcel of being human. It's part and parcel of um, the goodness of creation. Of course, it's it's affected by fallenness, it's affected by sin, but it's not bound up, it's not essentially tethered uh, to fallenness and sin. So in a lot of ways, I'm, I'm trying to counter a wide array of traditions that associate interpretation with the fall. Um, that, that ranges from really kind of conservative evangelical approaches that tend to think we will escape interpretation uh, when we are redeemed or that we fell into interpretation because of sin. But interestingly, it also cuts against the grain of certain um, philosophical traditions, including figures like Heidegger and Derrida, who also in interesting ways associated interpretation with violence, with fallenness. Um, and so I, I kind of take on those different camps and then try to suggest constructively that as Christians we can theorize and understand language, interpretation, and hermeneutics as part and parcel of a good creation. Try to figure out what that means now in our fallen world, but also realize that the redemption of interpretation is not redemption from interpretation. Uh, it's, it's a renewal of our, our hermeneutical capacities, you could say. So um, I think it has important implications. I think um, in practical spaces, when we have negative views of interpretation, we usually then think we have the one true reading that's not an interpretation, and funny things happen as a result. Um, so I think that there are, there are kind of pastoral and congregational implications to realizing that, no, to interpret is not a sin. Um, it's part and parcel of the way God has made us as finite, um, embodied creatures who inhabit his world by trying to understand it. So uh, I'm really grateful to have uh, the chance in the second edition to sort of further develop that argument and unpack it again for a new audience and a new context.